In the past two decades, strange, precise wounds have been appearing on some of the ocean's largest creatures. Whales, dolphins, and even sharks have been found with clean, perfect circular marks, almost as if someone had taken a melon baller to their flesh. But the most chilling case occurred off Guadalupe Island in 2010, where Great White was found with two perfect bite marks on its head, right in one of its most vulnerable spots. These weren't just scratches or random bite marks. They were deliberate, surgical, as though something had punched through its flesh. And it wasn't just marine life being targeted. In the 1970s and 80s, US Navy submarines patrolling of Hawaii discovered rubber circular domes punctured with similar circular holes. Punctures so precise, they appeared almost unnatural. Initially, the Navy suspected enemy attacks or mechanical failure, but a closer inspection revealed the same strange wounds seen on sea creatures, which, unless some rival military had a personal vendetta against dolphins, likely won't be targeted by another military. Humans weren't spared either. In 2009, a swimmer crossing the Alenuihaha Channel between Mao and Hawaii surfaced with a deep circular wound. Just a few years later, swimmer Eric Scholl was attacked in the Kawaiiwi Channel, leaving him with a painful laceration on his stomach. But the weirdest part of all of these mysterious attacks was that the victims had no idea they were even being bitten. A predator that moves fast, strikes with precision, and leaves no trace behind. Its attacks are over in milliseconds, with no time for its victims to react. It targets weak spots, ambushing before anyone knows what's happening. By the time it's gone, it leaves behind a perfect plug of flesh, like a serial killing, leaving its signature. You might be picturing some giant sea monster or mysterious deep sea creature, but behind all this chaos is a predator no bigger than your average skateboard. Meet Isistius brasiliensis, or better known by its cuter name, the cookie cutter shark. The cookie cutter shark is actually a parasite itself, classified as an ectoparasite, meaning it feeds on the outside of a host. At just 50 centimeters long, the cookie cutter shark seems like an easy target. But this tiny predator has one of the most bizarre hunting techniques in the ocean, capable of making precision attacks on animals much, much larger than itself. In 2023, Captain T.K. Walker and his crew fishing off the coast of Australia reeled in a swordfish, but when they examined the catch, they saw something unusual, perfect round holes in its flesh. The crew had seen this before and immediately recognized the culprit. And this wasn't the first time such marks were seen. Back in 2006, marine biologists studying dolphins in the Gulf of Mexico discovered similar deep circular wounds, each about the size of a coin. The evidence was undeniable. The cookie cutter shark was at work but this predator had been at work for millions of years. Fossil records suggest that its lineage stretches back to at least the Eocene Epoch, around 50 million years ago. That's long before humans ever set sail, and even before whales and dolphins evolved into the forms we know today. And yet, for all these bizarre attacks, there's barely any footage of the creature behind them. Not because it's a myth, but because it lives deep in the ocean's twilight zone, thousands of feet down, where cameras rarely reach. We don't often see the shark, but we do see the scars, again and again. During the height of the Cold War, the US Navy was on high alert. Military tensions were at their peak, and every strange anomaly was considered a potential threat to national security. During routine patrols off the Pacific waters near Hawaii, Navy submarines began reporting damage to their sonar domes. These sonar domes were essential for detecting objects in the water, and any damage to them could seriously jeopardize a submarine's effectiveness in underwater operations. The punctures were unlike anything they had seen before. They weren't simple cracks or scratches, but clean, round holes that left the sonar domes leaking. At first, the Navy assumed it was a mechanical failure, 
But the more they examined the damage, the more baffling it became. The holes weren't random or caused by debris in the water. The clean circular holes had a distinct pattern that suggested that damage wasn't caused by some rogue object, but by something alive. Something with a methodical, precise way of making its mark. And with the Cold War climate, the Navy couldn't afford to dismiss anything that might be a threat. The mystery deepened as the submarines returned with similar damage over the years. Eventually, the Navy brought in marine biologists. These experts recognized the wound patterns. They matched the bite marks seen on whales and dolphins. Further analysis and even the discovery of tiny teeth fragments embedded in the sonar domes confirmed the truth. It wasn't sabotage or mechanical failure, but the work of a tiny shark. The sonar domes had been bitten by the cookie cutter sharks, mistaking the smooth rubber for flesh. And despite the damaged sonar domes, this was definitely a sigh of relief for the Navy. Much better than a new Soviet weapon or underwater drone. But even though World War III wasn't as close as they thought, the operational problem remained. The cookie cutter shark was so effective at punching through the rubber sonar domes that they began reinforcing sonar domes with fiberglass coatings and harder materials in an attempt to resist the shark's unique feeding method. But even then, Reports suggest that some sharks still managed to leave their mark even against nuclear submarines. But what gives the shark the ability to cause such precise damage despite being the size of a loaf of bread? The cookie cutter shark has crescent-shaped razor-sharp teeth that are designed to cut and carve. These teeth are arranged in rows and each one functions like a tiny curved blade. The shark's jaw, on the other hand, is uniquely adapted for its feeding style. It can spin like a circular saw, allowing the shark to twist its body after latching onto its victim. As it twists, its teeth work in unison, carving out a perfect round plug of flesh. This is what gives the cookie cutter shark its signature bite. A clean, surgical wound that leaves a hole in its prey like a donut-shaped plug. Similarly to other sharks, it has the ability to regenerate its teeth as well. It has up to 20 teeth in its mouth at any given time, with the teeth being replaced in a conveyor belt-like fashion. This constant tooth regeneration means that the shark never runs out of ammo, so to speak. Whenever a tooth is lost or damaged during feeding, a new one is ready to take its place. The cookie cutter shark's small size, lightning fast movements and stealthy approach makes it nearly impossible to detect before the attack is already over. By the time the prey realizes it's been bitten, the shark is long gone. While the cookie cutter shark's bite may look gruesome, its impact is usually not life-threatening. These sharks target soft, fatty areas on larger animals like whales and dolphins, often leaving behind round wounds. But because they avoid vital organs and major muscle groups, the damage tends to be superficial. Most large marine animals that carry scars from cookie-cutter bites can go on functioning normally. But despite its stealthy reputation, the cookie-cutter shark doesn't actually hide in the dark. It glows. As one of the only few bioluminescent sharks, its underside is covered in tiny light-producing organs called photophores, which emit a faint greenish light. This glow helps it disappear against the dim surface light above, a trick known as counter-illumination. Strangely, it keeps one patch near its throat dark, creating the illusion of a small fish. That visual bait may lure its curious predators or prey for the shark to take its chunk out. For an animal that leaves such unmistakable scars, the cookie cutter shark is almost never seen. It spends most of its life in the deep, far below the range of sunlight, drifting through the twilight zone where pressure crushes and silence dominates. And maybe that's the most haunting part. 
Despite the lack of footage from this deep sea shark, we know it's there because we see the aftermath. Whether it's whales, dolphins, swordfish, or nuclear submarines, the circular wounds show proof that it still exists and is hunting. Not every threat in the ocean needs to roar. Some of them just glow quietly in the dark and bite once. <laughs>